fantastic. What's your general philosophy and what kind of team do you want to put on the ice that I guess you want to, you know, let the fans know what they're going to expect when they walk into a building on a given night? Well, the, the, the biggest thing, is, you know, I want the guys to be creative offensively. Um, you know, we got to take care of our own end first. Um, you know, I, I'm definitely, you find the successful teams are the ones that, that do defend well, that limit high-end scoring chances, you know, that, that really does the grunt work in the defensive zone, that's able to generate speed through the neutral zone and have fun and be creative in the offensive zone. Um, you know, I'm not a, a big, you know, believer in sit back and wait and trap. You want to be able to pressure the puck. Um, but at the same time, you have to be flexible enough to take the, take the pieces of the puzzle you're given and adjust the puzzle. Um, so, you know, Jason Sopolo, my assistant coach, and myself are going to have a, a base structure that we're going to use and then look at the pieces that Florida gives us and then make adjustments. You know, we're, we're not afraid to, to reinvent ourselves at different points throughout the season if we have to. Call-ups and injuries are going to happen, and you can't get pigeonholed into one type of play. So, you know, we're, we're both very capable of making those adjustments. And, you know, I think the fans are going to see we're, we're going to have a group that's going to like to finish their bumps. Um, we're going to have guys that can, uh, you know, take care of business when it, business has to be taken care of. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a group that can move the puck and, and create some offense as well. And, what, and then, like I said, it's, we're a young organization as a whole, so there's a lot of guys here that realize how close they are to playing in the NHL, either again or the first time. And uh, usually that makes a pretty competitive environment at the American League level. You kind of segued into my next question, but Rampage fans historic, historically have always loved their tough guys, whether it be a, a Jimmy Vandermeer or last season Eric Nielsen coming in. Francis Lassard has uh, been a heavyweight here for a couple of years. Who's the heavyweight uh, on the Florida Panthers uh, slash uh, new San Antonio Rampage roster that's going to be here? Well, I, I think we, what, what I like is I think we're going to have some team toughness. I think we're going to have the element here. Um, you know, guys like uh, Yonkman, he can protect teammates uh, at this level. You know, he's a guy that's got to play hard and be hard with his stick, and he can protect teammates when necessary. Um, if he's here, um, you know, if, if a Tyson Strachan's here, is a guy who can move the puck and makes plays, but also plays with that edge uh, in the back. Um, Mike Caruso is a defenseman who started later in the year playing with a little more edge, and I think he re recognizes for the next step in his career he's going to kind of have to kind of take on a little bit more of that physicality to his game. He's already a great puck moving defenseman, but I think he realizes to separate himself within the Panther organization, he's going to have to bring that toughness. And probably, um, you know, up front, you know, I've heard Bracken, you know, is willing to mix it up with the, the middle weights a little bit when he has to create energy. Um, and then Eric Selleck, you know, was our heavyweight last year in um, Rochester. But what I love about Eric is he can play. He had five goals and 10 assists for us last year. Um, and he can make plays as well as fight. I think he had 28 or 29 majors last year as a rookie, um, you know, fighting all the heavyweights and, and, who, and whoever came looking. Um, but he's a guy that he's so talented and he can skate that people chase him around. So I, I, he's not one of those guys that has to go out, lines up on a faceoff and goes, hey, let's go. He's a guy that because he just ran over their lead, three leading scores the last shift, other teams are like, geez, we got to settle him down. And uh, which usually leads to a lot of his, uh, his, uh, Fisticuffs, I guess. <laughs> well, time to go to our uh, fan question and answer mailbag. We had an opportunity for some of our fans to kind of jump in and, and ask the coach uh, their, uh, their questions. And one of them comes from uh, Jordan Williams, season ticket holder right here in San Antonio. And it's a, it's a good question because you've been in Rochester, and so obviously you don't get down here very often. But have you had a chance to look around the AT&T Center? And if so, how does it compare to other buildings uh, across the American hockey League? Oh, it's a fantastic building. I, you know, I just got done kind of getting a little tour, and uh, you know, hands down, it, it, it's one of the top two or three buildings in the league. Um, you know, coming from an older war memorial in Rochester uh, that was probably built pre World War II, World War One. Um, it's a beautiful building. The, you know, the locker room facilities are first class, and you know, I, I've, I've kind of hearing through the grapevine that uh, the Rampage walked away with most of the awards last year from a business standpoint. So I'm looking forward to working with the front office and you know, continuing to make this a successful organization on and off the ice. Another question to us, uh, and it comes from Alan, and uh, he would like you to kind of maybe provide, and I know it's tough obviously sitting here on July 22nd, but he would like you to maybe provide a little bit of a sneak peek into maybe the opening night lineup that we could see uh, in October. Well, that's, that's so tough right now because, you know, with Florida, the way they're, they're built, it's going to be a very competitive training camp. And I don't want to pigeonhole any guys, um, you know, from that standpoint. Um, but you look at some of the guys that are on two-way contracts, which are NHL American League contracts. Those are guys like Greg Rallo, who was in Austin last year, Mark Cullen. Um, Evgeny Dadanoff, who was with me in Rochester, Michael Repic, um, Tim Kennedy, 
uh, who two, just two years ago played a whole season for the Buffalo Sabres. Um, Scott Timmons, A.J. Jenks, who were with us last year, who are great young, up-and-coming, kind of that third-line, penalty-killing type guys, great on face-offs. Uh, you know, some young, exciting players um, like Anthony Luciani out of the Ontario League who had 40 goals last year. Jonathan Hazen had over 40 goals in the Quebec League. Um, Garrett Wilson, who was a, uh, a high draft pick by Florida out of the Western Hockey League, is turning pro this year. Um, and, you know, there's high expectations for him as, a, as an up-and-coming power forward. Made a big trade for Angelo Esposito, who was drafted 20th overall just three years ago by Pittsburgh. Um, so, you know, he'll be able to provide some skill. And in the back, we talked a little bit about Caruso and Yonkman and Stratch. And uh, Mike Koska last year uh, was with me, and, and he was probably one of the uh, leading offensive defensemen uh, in the American Hockey League last year. Uh, Colby Roback, who was a second-round draft pick, uh, was us, with us all last year as well, the Western Hockey League, and had a successful season as a 20-year-old with almost 30 points. He's a big six foot four. He's going to remind a lot of fans of like a Nicholas Lindstrom-type puck mover, good stick-on-puck defender. Um, and then other names like uh, Adam Comrie and uh, Roman Dirlach, um Evan Oberg. Uh, probably our biggest competition in camp is going to be defensemen. Um, we had a lot of quality American League defensemen, which you can't have enough of. Um, another guy like Keith Seabrook, who we picked up from Abbotsford. Um, I know there's names out there I'm missing right now. Um, I think you named enough for two teams right yeah, now. Yeah, you, know, uh, you know, and there's going to be a big battle for the backup goalie job. Um, you know, there's three talented kids. Um, you know, Tyler Plant was the main guy last year, battled some injuries. Um, so with him and Mark Chevrier and Brian Foster, there's going to be a pretty good battle between those three to who's going to be Jacob's uh, sidekick throughout the year. Is there one guy, and I'll follow up with this, that you're looking, whether it's a first-year guy uh, going into his second season or maybe a rookie that you're kind of excited about coaching and seeing you know, what strides uh, that particular player has made coming into this season? Well, probably the biggest thing uh, defensive-wise is, is seeing Colby, you know, row back. He, he, he did a lot of special things as a 20-year-old. He's a very talented kid. Um, and now that he's got that full season under his belt, seeing what he's going to be able to bring to the table um, from a defensive standpoint. Um, from a forward standpoint, we've got a lot of kids that the sky's the limit. Uh, Scott Timmons played 20 games for Florida as a 20-year-old last year. Um, I think A.J. Jenks got off to a slow start in his rookie year and really progressed out of the Ontario League. Um, Eric Selleck's another kid who he, he's a, he's a, a different story because he came out of Division Three hockey, um, was a leading scorer in the country as a Division Three hockey player and kind of progressed or made the, the change into be more of a tough guy. Um, so I think we got a pretty good balance right now on paper. You know, knock on wood, we can stay healthy as an organization this year. And, uh, you know, these guys can, can play and, and play to their identity. I, I think there's, there's a lot of exciting things um, that are going to be in the locker room this year. You know, as we said before, Rochester kind of by – you know, default being in the Western Conference, but seeing a lot of teams in the East throughout the year. Do you feel, and I know you've seen uh, by being in the North and playing a lot of those Western Conference teams, do you see a difference at all in style? And are you anticipating a difference in style from the game that's played in the smaller rinks in the East to maybe the bigger, you know, NBA style arenas here that are out uh, in the West? No, I don't think you're going to see a big style change. I think you're going to still be dealing with a lot of young, hungry hockey players. I don't think it's going to be their environment so much is going to dictate the play on the ice as the, as the kind of character guys that you have. And that was a big thing for um, us going with the Panthers organization this year was really, you know, we're, we're changing the culture uh, within the organization. And, uh, you know, getting guys that it's about winning and being competitive and, and, and pushing each other as well as, um, you know, pushing back against your opponents kind of thing. And um, so, I, you know, I think there's a lot of talented teams out there. You know, uh, Chicago's traditionally, you know, been talented. Nashville always puts a great team on the ice in Milwaukee. You know, Peoria has done, has done a great job. Um, you know, Abbotsford last year was always competitive. Um, you know, so just within our division then, you got Houston being the runner-up. Um, you know, who I, who I saw play, and, and, and Mike did a great job with that team last year, being a defensive structure team and being hard to play against. Um, you know, Oklahoma City, I saw, I thought they did a great job last year. I saw them play Hamilton uh, in the playoffs. I know um, uh, Jeff Pyle, the new coach in Austin, I coached against him when he was in Gwinnett in the ECHL, and, you know, Austin's going to have a team that can move the puck and, and can make some plays. So it, it's going to be, those are the, one, the big ones, the Austins, the Houstons, the Oklahoma Cities, those big division rivals are going to be the ones that are really going to make or break our season to make sure we set ourselves up well for hockey in the spring. Finally, before I let you go off the ice, what's the one thing that you're looking most forward to about being in San Antonio? 
probably getting off the airplane and not having 20 inches of snow. Um, you know, it's definitely different. Rochester was fantastic for me. I was close. It was an hour from my hometown. So I spent a lot of time with friends and family this past season. Um, but really looking forward to, to coming down here and just getting to know San Antonio. I've coached against it. I've been in this market from that way. But everyone tells me about how, you know, how warm the people are here you know, and how friendly everybody is. And, you know, what a, what a great, it's, it's, it's a big city with a small town feel. Um, you know, there's gonna be a lot of great food uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of great experiences to be had. And, you know, hopefully, you know, gonna be able to put down some roots here for a, a number of years and put a successful team on the ice till just like the players, we all eventually get a chance to work our way up to the NHL. Coach, welcome to San Antonio. Good news is it doesn't stay 105 uh, too often past the end of August. So by the time we reconvene here for training camp, it should be nice and pleasant. We should be ready to go for hockey season. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. Coach Chuck Weber joining us here on a summer afternoon as we get set for the 10th anniversary season of San Antonio Rampage Hockey. For SARampage.com, I'm Dan Weiss.